The Lord has declared over you that you're to pull up your tent pegs and stretch forth the curtains, stretch forth the cords, and to lengthen even this house and this place as you have done it in your heart and you said, Lord, I'm making room for you in my heart. Make room in this house. And as you're making room in this house, it is by faith that the Lord is saying, I will fill it. It is not your filling. It's not by you or what you can do or can make it happen. But it's by the Spirit of the Lord that he is causing this birthing and expansion. As Isaiah 54 said, seeing one that has been barren even before the children are born, seeing, O barren one, as one who has had children, for the Lord is birthing, he's causing there to be an overflow, an outflow. I want to make this place as it was, as were a sign and a wonder that shall cause the glory of the Lord to extend beyond these boundaries. That I'm not a container in this building. I will not be contained, but I'll be released in a greater dimension. And because you have chosen not just to be a pastor in this building, but you've chosen to be a pastor in this parish, then for I shall give you many more children than what you can birth in your own, but I am causing it to be born of the Spirit, and they're hungering and thirsting. I am causing the blinders off of this region to come off, and people are going to be awakened and saying, Surely there must be bread. Where can we find bread? And I'm going to bring them to the house of the Lord, to Bethel, the house of bread. And I'm giving you fresh bread. There is bread not only for you to serve, but bread that you're going to be eating. Fresh revelation that's coming to your own heart that you're delighting in. And it's like the Lord has taken away all of your old library and all of those old books where you've been digging in and receiving. And the Lord's saying, I am birthing it inside of you. And that as you read, you're going to find, I've never seen that before, but yet it's always been there. Because the time is now that I am, I am layering and I'm taking it to a deep place and even layering my presence glory to glory and line upon line until where that you're going to carry even a deeper sense of the presence of God. There has been something fresh and alive that has been birthed because now it has been, I am looking into the throne room of God and not looking to the people. I am now speaking to the rock and not just looking to speak to the people. I'm wanting the heart of God because I'm calling people to follow after those who will speak to God. For the Lord is saying, Son, I'm bringing such a peace in your heart, knowing that I've just called you to stand in the holy place and see what I will do. The adjustments are going to come. The adjustments are going to happen by the Spirit, but those things that I put in your heart, that you're going to see them happen. All things are ready. The feast is ready, and I will be the one who bids them to come. Prepare for income. Prepare for ingathering. Prepare for increase. Every crease upon crease upon crease. And to the point he's saying, God, give us wisdom to know what, what to do with the increase of people, the increase of funds, the increase of, of revelation. I don't want it just to be stored up. I want it to be sown. I want it to be a distributor of the fullness of God. As you've been faithful with the little, it's all relevant, then I have found a good stewardship in you, O man of God. Therefore, I have watched over that, and now is the time that you'll be a steward over much more, a much more. And because you didn't take the glory for yourself or take it for yourself, that I can entrust you with a greater dimension. You've not been one who's taken the one talent and buried it in the ground because you're saying, God, it belongs to you. Therefore, I'm going to invest it. I'm going to extend it. I'm going to cause it to multiply. And therefore, because you've rightly said it belongs to the Lord, then there is more that's coming, more besides that. I am causing a fresh renovation of inside out where there's there no longer a, a sense of weariness and God when and how. But the Lord is saying to you, I'm causing there to be a renewing, first of all, in your mind of where that, that you'll know good and faithful servant. And you've been good and you've been faithful in all that the Lord has said. But it's also there is a second wind coming in your spirit 
to where you're going to find yourself having a desire to do things that you've never, that you before you said, it's not my gifting, it's not who I am, it's not how I do it. And the Lord is saying, I'm coming with fresh DNA, I'm coming with a fresh extending, and you're going to find yourself even teaching where before it was a stretch and a struggle that the teaching is going to come out of experience, but it's going to also come out of revelation. For the hand of the Lord is upon you to do it. That you're going to be one that comes up out of your heart and your spirit and saying things that you've never thought of, and it wasn't repeating what someone else said. It is going to be firsthand born of the Spirit, and this refreshing is going to come to you and through you. Because the husbandman that labors, first of all, gets to eat of the fruit, and you're going to get to taste of the fruit as it, first of all, comes from the throne in the presence of God, and you're going to get a taste of it. And it's by revelation and by dissemination that you're going to see the Lord has given you handfuls on purpose. You know, we're, whenever we're on the plane coming here, and the Lord just showed me this picture. He showed me you kneeling down, and you were working with your hands. And then the Lord came to you, and he lifted up your head, and you begin to see out further. And what the Lord spoke to me is you've been in a season of being faithful to the work of your hands, but you're entering a new season where he is lifting up your head. He's giving you new eyes to see, new vision to see of where he wants to take you because it's a new place. It's a wider place. It's a broader place with more influence, more vision, and more strategy. And then I looked next to him, and I saw you with some binoculars. And you were looking, <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to see the details. You're going to see the details. It's this, it's this unique and wonderful um, match that he's made because he's lifting up your head to see this broad picture. And he's giving you the binoculars to say, okay, well, here's this little detail here. Here's this detail here. Here's the, that detail there. And together, you're going to be able to step in to what God's called you. I just saw also your voice in this house going to a new level. And God wanting you to be bold and confident and step out and begin to speak more, begin to teach more. Uh, this body is going to need to hear your voice more in this next season because of what the Lord is showing you both. It needs to be coming out of both your mouths, being declared and being proclaimed because the Lord said he has gathered the supporting cast around you because he's not just called you to walk down a path. He's called you to blaze a trail. Because there is a pioneer anointing upon this house and upon you and upon your team to go where no church has gone in this region. And to not just go down a path, but blaze a trail for other people to follow in this region. Thank you, Lord. I'm speaking this to both of you to begin with. The Lord just laid this on my heart. How that God in Psalm 78, he rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim but he chose the tribe of Judah which we know as praise to where the Ark of the Covenant was in the presence of God in the midst of Judah he said he chose the tribe of Judah Mount Zion which he loved and he built the sanctuary like the heights like the earth which he has established forever. And he also chose David, his servant, and he took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ewes that had young, he brought, the, he brought him to shepherd Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritance. So he shepherded them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hand. To you, your mother, you're a mom in the house of the Lord. And God, I feel in my heart, wants to commend you for being yourself, for not trying to fit into some mold that people expect a pastor's wife to be, but that you're a mama in the house of the Lord. You're a mother. You mothered your children well. You're mothering the flock well. And God wants to come to you and and commend you that you're, 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 you're doing the right thing. You're walking by the integrity of your heart, and you're doing the giftings that God has put in you. 
And sometimes you feel condemned because of because I, I'm I'm not like other other wives, other pastors' wives. Don't do that anymore. You are the perfect pastor's wife for this house. And not only this house, you will be an example of the pastor's wives who are actually under bondage because of this. And you're going to help free them. Teaching's going to come your way. You're going to be called on more and more. Just be practical. Just lay it out there. Just be yourself and minister. You're going to have a, a whole company of, of women in that day that's going to come to you and say, thank you for being who you are. Just keep being. He's going to increase you. You watch. And you too are going to have a legacy of sons and daughters. That the legacy is going to be a company of people in that day who are going to come and say, thank you for loving me. Thank you for receiving me, accepting me. Thank you for letting me grow in my own time. But at the same time, thank you for instructing me and thank you for receiving me, even whenever I was bad and didn't act right and everything else. Because God has put in your heart a father's heart. And you're, it's not just going to be for this church, but one of these days you will reach out beyond this place and you will go sharing about the Father heart of God to other people because it's, it is within you. God has given you that ability, that grace to be able to love as a father in this house. He's going to strengthen you in areas where you feel weak, but your weak, weakest areas will be God's strongest areas through your life. So quit looking at weaknesses and quit looking at, at, well, I'm not like other pastors. Thank God. Thank God. I mean, I like you like you are. And God, I'm saying God likes you like you are too. And, and But he, he's going to take what you think is weak and he's going to make it his strongest point, his strongest point through you for his glory. But the legacy is what I'm wanting to speak to you about. That's what the Lord's wanting to say, legacy. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're going to run over the walls. You're planted by a, a, a fruitful a water well that's going to cause fruit to extend not just to this generation, but to the generation, to the generation, and to the next generation. Hallelujah. We love you. Let's pray over them. You want to? Father, we thank you for the, what, you, what you're doing and, and what you've done in this couple and what you're doing and what you're going to do. We bless them, Lord, with honor right now to honor them and, and say, God, we just are so grateful that we could know them. And we ask for your hand of, to be upon them for the days to come, that they will shepherd your people by the integrity of their heart and the skillfulness of their hands. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Would you thank the Lord for your pastor and wife? Please do. Honor them.